Delta Ru News. Delta Ru News. Undertale slash Delta Ru. Ninth anniversary newsletter. Ooh. Look at that. That's the. That's from doing damage in Undertale. Genocide reference. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Genocide reference. They, they did a genocide reference. That's crazy. It's been nine years since the eighth anniversary. No, it hasn't. And 99 years since the game came out. Here's to an. What is this bit? Interview. Sans, what do you think about the number. What are we doing? Hello? Is this going to be my favorite newsletter because we just bully Sans? Nine's okay, but I kind of feel bad for how it ended up. You know, 7 8 it. 7 8 9? Yeah, at least that's what the theorists are saying. I don't believe it. I refuse to believe for that 7 8 9. 7 is supposed to be the cool number. They would never do that. Um, it's just a pun, Papyrus. 7 8 9. Like, um, the real number series? Ah, I see. A pun. That explains my bizarre lack of amusement. Well, what about the counter pun? Five, six, seven. If seven is some kind of cool dog or wolf, and five, six, seven on nine, wouldn't that mean that five is the real culprit? An irresponsible dog owner, and that seven was just a misled anti hero. Um, if seven loved five, maybe they were just doing what they felt like they had to? No, seven was weak. Duty is no reason to harm another- Oh, This is getting heated. Numbers are stupid, I'll wreck them all. Get out of here, math. I am- I like numbers. Don't worry, Alfs. I'll leave zero and one. Please never call her Alfs again, that's a terrible nickname. That way you can still do nerd stuff. So, one, one, one- Oh no! What? Is this lore? Do Sans and Papyrus both know binary? Is this even binary, actually? I'm not completely sure. Oh boy. Translate binary to English. Here we go. If I had a nickel for every time I had to translate binary for something Undertale related, I'd have two nickels, which isn't a lot, but it's weird that happened twice. Like, I'm pretty sure... Can you do binary with just, like, three numbers and four? I'm not sure. I'll, I'll try it first, though. Papyrus's looks like it might be genuine binary, but I think Sans might just be screwing with me. Convert. Okay, so I don't think that's binary. It might be some other kind of code that I don't know about. But Papyrus's looks like binary to me. So here we go. I think it was that. Yep. Papyrus just yelled sans and binary. How is this real? <laughs> I 
I can't believe it's now like Undertale lore that Papyrus said sans in binary. That is all right. Let's step back a sec. If Seven is a misled anti-hero, is Negative Seven a villain who thinks he's good? No, you're starting with the wrong premise. We need to go from the motivation. Count. So, negative nine, negative eight, negative seven. Hmm, this time. Negative nine, negative eight, negative seven. So they spit them out? Well, if eating makes food go away, perhaps negative eating is cooking. After all, making food and eating food add up to nothing. Hmm, not in my brother's case. Eating any food seems to generate hamburger wrappers and peanut shells. Hmm, okay. So for it to be the opposite of eating, negative eating is cooking. That also deletes trash. Maybe the trash is the thing getting cooked. That'd use it up. Cooking disgusting garbage. Ah, it's just like when my brother makes food. So I'm following the formula. Negative seven is Papyrus who had Sans negative nine cook for him. What? I'm the villain? Hmm, maybe you seem like an enemy, but you're actually a good guy. Just because you're the bad guy doesn't mean you're a bad guy. What? Why would I ever be an enemy? <laughs> that was a very weird potluck. By the by, does anyone else want a ninth serving of escargot served in a shape of a nine? Does anyone want first serving of vegetarian stargazy pie? Where are these new foods in Undertale lore? What is happening? Please don't eat the spaghetti, it's still congealing. That seems normal to me. Yep, still disgusting. I hate you. Anyways, that was something. Ninth anniversary kitchen set, so that was the point of all that. It has nothing to do with the number nine, but this year, Fangamer is putting out a special line of kitchen-related products. They made a special video to promote it. You can use it every day. Reaction content. What a disgusting mug. Um... Deltarune Apron. A Toriel's been converted into a puppet who has no free will. Um, it's a pretty good healing item, but for some reason you can only get one slice. Oh, okay, real knife. Now we're talking. We're getting somewhere. Yep, there's... Okay, so they're hacking. They, they they just hacked. They have no respect for the vision of the creator of the game. They're just doing whatever they want with the code. Truly disgusting. I asked for this. You can get your own weird yet cute tutorial to use as an oven mitt. She's a bit flat, but apparently stuffing her snout with more fluff would have increased her flammability. Hmm. Feel free to. What does this mean for the lore, Toby? What's this spam tutorial connection? Okay. Actually, that might be your best use. Seriously looked at another company's character head as over mint product, and it actually isn't legally an oven mint, you know, because it's too flammable. <laughs> well then. That's right, fill the mug with milk or another opaque liquid, drink it, and reveal the dog saying inside. This is slightly unnerving. This was another request from me. I had a similar cup as a child. It had some sort of creature at the bottom, and you wouldn't get to see it until you drank almost everything. Is this some kind of deep metaphor? Th th this is connected to the ocean, guys. The depths. Don't, don't let him deceive you. It's Gaster Lord. Okay. Try serving hot chocolate or something to people that have never seen it before. 
or use the hidden dog as a motivator to get someone to drink some terrible medicine. Since it's not clear if the dog has any concept of g good and evil, it is unaware of the effects caused when it is used in this way. Alternatively, you can fill up one of those chocolate cakes that's supposed to look like dirt and excavate the dog with small spoons. Then you can bury it again. Definitely some kind of metaphor. With this plate, you can imagine your customer at the exclusive Papyrus Collaboration Cafe. I'm not sure if the food would actually taste good. Hmm. Certain parts are transparent, so different liquids turn his eye different colors. As a result, if you make anything other than blue lemonade, he's basically going to turn into an AU version of Sans. Toby Fox acknowledges Undertale AUs. This is crazy. This is history in the making. Um, I mean, technically, his eye turning yellow is also canon, so checkmate Mr. Fox. Also, it just hit me, green sands. We, we can make green sands with this cup, get on it. It's the perfect dish to make your favorite dessert. Jo oh, geez. Josh jump scare. I, I forgot I can do that. <laughs> that genuinely jump scared me. <laughs> It's a perfect dish to make your favorite dessert. Josh, you know what I'm talking about. Glam- And it took what I said was my favorite food. I- I feel uncomfortable. I'm being acknowledged too much. You know I'm talking about Glam Burger. I love glue. That That's what I put as my favorite food when it asked me. So if you didn't know, um, actually, you buy glam per- Eh, I need- I'm freaked out too much. You buy glam burgers from Burger Pants and the MTT Resort, and, um, he describes the burgers, I believe, as being, like, sequins with glue. So for my favorite food, I put glam burger, and in parentheses, I put I love glue because, um, Anyways, it would be so delicious. It, it certainly would. It certainly would. What a cute apron. It's easy to see what's appealing about it. Huh? What did you say, Josh? Yes, please stop saying my name. Yes, it's the Deltarune from Toriel's Clothing and from Deltarune. I always wanted to wear Toriel's Clothing. Hum. Thank you, Trek Freak. You didn't need to say that, though. Alright, I'm... Do you want to go? Like, <laughs> and coming later. Sands and Papyrus Salt and Pepper Shakers, they will be available in 2025. This idea was suggested by Ever Dryad. Dry Dryad? Dryad, probably. SMP, naming wise, it's kind of perfect. It's genius. And like, I feel like you could also like say Pepper kind of suits Papyrus's personality. Is Sand salty? Maybe there has to be some kind of pun I can make here, like. I don't know, I feel like I already killed him in the genocide route, so making fun of him anymore would just be pouring salt in the wound. Anyways, you might already have salt and pepper shakers, so how about using them for other types of powders? For example, the ketchup chip flavoring powder from some Canadian factory, or powdered milk, or bone meal, the list of great ideas goes on. This is a secret boss. 
You can't convince me that this isn't. Th this is just a secret boss. This is horrifying. Here we go. Deltarune Progress Update. Last time I explained everything left required to release Chapter 3 and 4. If you missed it, the information is here. I didn't. By the way, regarding testing Chapter 1 and 2 with the new Game Maker function, we are waiting on the Game Maker team to help out with some issues we've been having. It will take a little longer, but when things are ready, we'll let everything we'll let everyone know on the official Undertale Twitter. It's only been a month, I'm writing this September 3rd, but let's quickly review what has been done in that time. Chapter 3- Ooh, New screenshot. What's it called? Oh, it automatically downloaded it. Oh, it's unnamed. Dang it. What is this? Actually, like, I'm not joking, this looks like something related to a secret boss. It's too, like, spoopy. What's interesting is Rousey isn't here, it's just Chris and Susie as well. What is... huh. This is really interesting. Alright. Oh, didn't mean to right click. Alright. As mentioned before, Chapter 3's main content was completed a while ago. Chapter 3's Japanese translation is currently in the checking phase. Wait for a localization company is going through the game carefully to, to determine that all the lines displayed display correctly in Japanese. This process should be completed by the beginning of October. We are hoping to begin professional testing of the PC version in mid-October. This is really an interesting image. Chapter f Hello? Hello? Um... Um... Okay. Okay. So, first of all, assuming this is from Chapter 4, which I believe it is since it's literally right under chapter 4 this I think might be the first image we've gotten of chapter 4's dark world but Noel's outfit is different so maybe not actually and she's holding a flashlight She's wearing black clothing. This might be pajamas, so is this maybe Noelle's room or inside Noelle's house? It looks like there's like a big present in the background. Okay. So I guess confirmation we're going to get more Noel story content in chapter four at least. It's still unclear if she will make any significant appearances in chapter three. Her That is interesting. 
We met our internal deadline to complete chapter 3 and 4's main, content, main content, which was September 1st. Oh, congratulations. With that, chapter 4's PC version is essentially complete, minus some bug fixes and Japanese localization. A preliminary pass of chapter 4's translation is now being worked on. I expect this first pass will be finished at the time we send out the next newsletter. After that would come additional passes, and then checking, like, Chapter 3 is undergoing now. By the way, some people were able to play Chapter 4. I've seen people play it six times now. Everyone liked it. Watching it now, it feels really complete. So yeah, it's pretty big news. Chapter 5, ooh, a balloon. It's Pops from Undertale Yellow. Well, Pops' cousin, at least. Anyways. Anyone not working on localization, console porting, or fixes is now working on Chapter 5. This will be the main focus for us moving forward. I'm really excited to see this chapter get made. Overall... Oh, it's the Marching Cup again. Actually, don't remember exactly which news there we saw that, and I just remember seeing it at some point. Regarding Chapter 3 and 4's development, I have personally completed everything I can actively do for it. Now all I can do is wait for localization and testing. Getting to this point and then having to wait. It feels like I'm strapped to a chair with... <laughs> Glamburger, I love glue. Just out of my reach. But they exist. Chapters 3 and 4 are real. Now it's just a matter of time. Ooh, this is fun. Delta in Chapter 2 concept art and unused music. Although it's technically Undertale's anniversary, I consider this day to be a celebration of Delta in as well. Sorry guys, you have to share a birthday party this year. Since it's been a while since Chapter 2's release, please allow me to share some materials from its development. I hope you enjoy it. View concept art. Very early concepts. Um, some kind of jack-in-a-box. There's mouse. There's, um... What is it called? The task. Task. Yeah, task. That's what it's called. Most NPCs will mask face electric socket comes out of the wall socket. Socket. I can talk. Kinda brainish. Fire zap out of mouth. So yeah, this is the... Uh, like, original concept for the wear wire. Pulls self out of socket grotesquely. One is handsome, possibly NPC, or has spear. Light switch bird. Blows depending if light is on or off. Fantasy. Appears from background, boring design. Could maybe be an NPC. Okay, here we go. Plug guy. This design sucks. What kind of animal or monster can be plug themed? Apparently, werewolves, I guess. I don't know how we got there. Let's find out. Plug ichor, like manticore. <laughs> no, stop. You. <laughs> Toby, <laughs> what is that? its face is a shock. He can't see. He just uses his satellite eyes to watch TV inside his brain all the time. This is one of the first images I drew while brainstorming concepts for the chapter. From the beginning, I knew I wanted to have enemies with electric sockets for faces. This idea is so good that the new Mario 8 Luigi game is also doing it. These are just sketches and not real designs, so none of them got used. I really like the plug guy drawing, lol. I, I just can't. I <laughs> 
Mad Mailer. Salary virus. Ooh, I actually kind of like this design. This is like a mix of... It's like Toby took this and then split it into um, Vera Virukun and the Addisons. And also it's Spamton's father now that I think about it. Because Spamton is basically a virus mixed with um, Ads. Addison's, so... Yeah, th this is my new headcanon. This is Spamton's dad. Mad Mailer is... I guess this could also be Spamton's dad, since Spamton is Spam Mail. Wait, now that I think about it... Is there any chance this is, like one of the ideas for Spamtons, because, like, Mad, that definitely fits Spamton, Mailer, and Spam Mail, like, is this just an early concept for Spam- and it has the blush, and this is Spamton! This is absolutely an early Spamton. I- probably. It, this really feels like an early Spamton, or at least, like, something that might have helped inspire Spamton's design, because it's very similar, and I think even in Spamton's shop, his eyes will, like, go like this sometimes. That's really interesting. These ideas pres- Yeah, okay, Conf confirmation. I just needed to scroll down, like, a little bit, literally. Mad Mailer. Alright, um, Deltrune community, you know what to do. Start making banner fan tracks for this guy. We're going to make Mad Mailer into one of the best fan characters that's technically not a fan character, but yeah, you get what I mean. Get on it. It'll be awesome. Ultimately, they were not used because their existence conflicted with those characters. Right, okay. So this wasn't really a design for Spamton, it was just a character that is similar to Spamton, and so once Toby thought of Spamton, he decided to scrap it, so it's... It's like, kind of like a spiritual predecessor to Spamton. But I'm guessing this was probably just meant to be a neat random enemy. But then he decided to make Spam Mail the, like, character for the secret boss, so... Yeah. Seems like Mad Mailer's tie would have been prehensile. I don't know what that word means. Of grasping is what it means. That's horrifying. Not sure what the top thing's supposed to be a Kirby enemy. Fan Buzzmite. Loves peace and quiet, but is really noisy. Cooling things. Flying. Small four pronged wheel attacks the four pronged wheel. Nice. Repels flame attacks. Holy crap. Confirmed that Toriel was going to be in chapter 2 at some point. Okay, just came. But alt having hands, lol. A flying enemy character inspired by a computer fan. Kinda cramped in here, but pick what you like. So rules concept art. Holy crap, look at this early rules hairstyle. Incredible. This was created before Chapter 1. The character is merely a placeholder concept and not intended to be an actual character. It's just an example of how we could use the shop visual real estate to have a cool character. This ended up being used for rules in Chapter 1. 
Oh, so like rules wasn't even planned yet, or at least not for like this shop. It was just a random idea, and then they're like, oh, this would be funny to use for rules. Ooh. Maybe the shopkeeper could be some sort of cool cyber robot. I never designed his body or thought anything past this. Huh. Neat. Jeez! Oh, <laughs> what is that? <laughs> this is Nightmare Queen. Holy crap, these designs are actually kind of- Ooh, wait! Okay, so some kind of franchise had to be censored here. But I do really like this design, actually. Oh, uh, this design right here. Ooh, and they're also colored sprites. I mean, okay, they're unfinished, but neat still. These designs are pretty cool, too. So it looked like originally Toby might have been like thinking a more like crazed kind of look, which I think actually can fit Queen quite a bit with how eccentric she is. But she's not necessarily, like, scary, though. Like, she's crazy, but not scary, so I see why he didn't go with this. But still neat designs. And it, does, it is, like, interesting for me to, like, think about, like, a more unhinged queen here. It took me a very long time to figure out Queen's design. I wanted her to be intimidating and cool. Inspirations included Hexadecimal from Reboot, the Alien Queen from Alien. How have I never actually thought about that? The Alien Queen from Alien. Her head is literally shaped just like that. How did I never think? Okay. Well. The Alien Queen from Alien. Power Ranger bad guys. Yeah, I can see that. I haven't really watched much Power Ranger, but I can see that. And Rose Master from Cucumber Quest. I want her head shape to be unique so that I won't overlap with those other existing characters too much, but it was difficult. Interesting. I think reading all of this is... My brain is short-circuiting. Oh, look! This is a joke that made it in. The situation bites, you could say it megabytes, I didn't ask you. Except Small Rousey saying, haha, it's funny, got cut. You forgot the first rule of robotics, robots never tell the truth. That line goes kinda hard. <laughs> There's one way to beat Queen, she told me her weakness. Huh? Why'd she do that? She thought it would be funny? What? <laughs> my fashion sense increases in proportion to my power. That's actually... This, I think, if possible, should be used at some point. 
That is a perfect queen line. I'm everybody's ex-wife is an interesting line. Huh. After I began writing her dialogue, she shifted into being a more humorous character. I decided to reflect this in her design. Yeah, this is kind of why I figured, where it's like her original design looked a lot more unhinged and threatening, but her personality just wouldn't have matched that as well, since she's just really silly in nature. Realizing simple might be best. Holy crap, queen with earrings? Initially, I was trying to draw her sprite with her head facing straight on, but it was ultimately lacking in personality. Here are also some last-ditch attempts at a different head shape. I thought a handkerchief-like head shape with giant hoop earrings would make her seem more like a crazy aunt, crazy mom type character. I still don't dislike it. In the end, though, simple is best and easiest to draw. Yeah, I think I actually agree. I do like the earrings look a bit, but I think her current look works well. Enemies! Vero Vero! Huh, neat. And put the check mark above the one you decided to go with. Nothing fits computer virus better than a small imp or devil creature. Creation was trial and error. Honestly, I feel like it would be kind of interesting if, like, there were, like, three different designs for Vero Vero Kun, just to, because it's, like, I feel like the look he went with was, like, meant to be, like, this chaotic random look because it's a computer virus. And so maybe it would be kind of interesting if when you ran into one, like, Vero Vero Kun, uh, multiple more, like, spawned in with it that had, like, different designs to just add to the randomness more. Because I kind of feel like I like this design a bit and this design too. I don't know, just a thought. Then the walking cars. Oh! Okay, so originally the walking cars were meant to be like actual enemies you fight, but then they just end up becoming obstacles in the overworld. Neat. Mario Artist Polygon Studio. Interesting. Tusk. I don't know why I find that so funny. Tusk. Instead of Tusk. It looks like there was a plan for it to be more like a lion than a cat. Tusk Manager. Alright, new headcanon, Tusk Manager is... Hmm... Tusk Manager is a lioness, and it's Task Manager's smother. That is the new headcanon. Originally, Tusk was going to be called Tusk and be a lion. You know, Tusk. It would have been controlled by a lion tamer. Tusk, who eventually became Task Manager. That's why she has a whip, see? There's a good reason for it. This newsletter is too much. I can't.
I like the detail of their tails being a pointer, which turns into an hourglass when they get overwhelmed. The idea of playing something so much it gets... Oh, the idea of petting something so much it gets overstimulated comes from a childhood memory of mine. We went over to my cousin's house, and they had an Ibo robot dog toy. Me and my brothers all pet it at the same time, and my cousin was like, Stop, you're killing it! <laughs> that was a nice memory. Toby Fox lore is the best lore. Great wear wire. Holy crap, there's a lot of detailed information on here. Open, there's the throw. Details on how the plug enemy works. Originally imagined Queen controlling various characters using plugs, as seen in some of the very early concept art. However, I ended up restricting this idea to mostly one character, and Birdly, specifically for him. I wasn't only in parentheses. I wasn't sure if the wire should attach to the top of the screen or shrink into a nose. I reused the wireless idea with wear-wear wire. Am I allowed to be proud of this design? I actually really like the wear-wire design. It's just... fun. NPCs existing character sprite concepts. Oh! This Addison looks very Spamton-like. That's interesting. Oh, Newbert. So this one was probably from before Chapter 1, because Newbert's always been there. Everyone loves Newbert. Printor. Swatch. <laughs> Incredible. Bald Swatch. Bald Swatch. Wait. Never mind. Um, keyboard Kev. Okay, there's there's the swatch. We know. Various muscular bodies in the background, but can't see heads for some reason. And the original, you can see heads. So. Or maybe they're just big buff swatches, but with only one color each. That's basically what he went with. Swatchling butt lord. This is the second time we've gotten something with butts. But I guess he did get to make the butt joke with the... What was it called? It was like, I think it was butler juice and... For sure, it was just butt juice. Was that what it was? Something like that. The aristocrat area. Newbert's moving up in the world. Mouse a million. Only Newbert remains here above me still. Who? Audiophile? Various NPCs, most of them were directly included in the chapter. The Addison's designs were created in relation to Spamton, yep, that makes sense. So in the end, the in-game versions look even more similar than this concept art. Printer was not used, but his sprite and dialogue were created, as well as a printer-based song that he could play. I just thought, there's too many NPCs already. Printer is the best character in Deltarune. Swatch's initial art, what was going on there, by the way, I'm pretty sure his overworld sprite was based off of my concept art instead of Gigi's redrawn version, so that's why I looked a bit off in the cafe. Did I really just draw all this stuff directly without any sketches? Holy crap, this birdly art goes hard.
gets dejected and loses armor? Please. I have to see that game now. <laughs> that sounds hilarious. There, like, needs to be, like, this fancy animation where, like, the armor, like, disintegrates into dust. Like, oh, and have the monster death, like, sound effects play. So it's, like, the wind. It's just, like, and the armor just disappears. And then maybe, like, in Amori, like, he could turn, like, black and white like Hero does when he sees a spider. That would be amazing. Chess drew the original the original concept for Birdley's Dark World outfit, so there it is in the top left. She drew the original sprite too. Ah. I simplified it slightly by removing the cape. That sad Birdley in the bottom left is me great minds think alike. Please Toby find a way to use this at some point. It would be so funny. <laughs> Also, Birdly with a cape sounds amazing as well. There it is! No! Mobile games! Interesting. Ah uh, yes, where do we find out? Yes! Go, Noel, proceed. Do it. Is this face Noel? It's horrifying. Maybe this is meant to be like Noel looking up at Birdly flying down. Interesting. All right, uh, two people and a cube. Two people locked inside of the cube. The people be- Oh, it's them jumping into the dark world. And then they turn into sonic orbs. Cool land on the ground. Hard for me to draw, but remember... The cape and hair will be up, and all that happens is that their cape and hair will flutter down and settle, and then they get up. Incredible. Incredible concept art. Oh yeah, and I do love that in the Deltarune universe, the canine unit are prisoners. Well, Undyne's a police officer to, like, mirror how... They work under Undyne and Undertale, just cool idea. And also, Officer Bluke. Officer Bluke is great. <laughs> Toriel in the snug pajama outfit. Spam ton carts. Oh, that's fun. He was considering making the eyes of the carts glow, but he ended up going with just this. I think I do prefer that they don't glow. <laughs> yes, Rousey Splat and Rousey Stool form R. Holy crap, look at that design for the hacker over here. Whoa. Splendid Lands Art. These ones are crazy. Kind of disturbed by this one. It's like an angel. It's got like some kind of 
lust thing going on. Huh. I'm just like genuinely trying to think what some of these designs could like maybe be used for in an alternate universe version of Deltarune. I was given the broad theme of Cyberworld and told to pretty much just design whatever I wanted, expecting only a handful to actually make it in. I made all of these within a couple days, just making whatever came to mind. <laughs> when they stand over a spot that can be hacked into, their cursor-shaped head turns into a pointing figure. Finger, jeez. They don't notice this change, so it's up to you, the player, to help them. So it didn't get used in exactly that way, but Toby took the idea and used it for the quest to, for quest for the spam to neophyte. It's neat. Oh, it's the pet thing. I forget what it's called. I just realized. Holy crap, it's Trashy Neo? Trashy Neo even has the yellow and pink. It's Trashy Neo. It even has the eyes. What? What is this lore? What does it mean? E. Oh, that is intense. Test theory confirmed. Holy crap. Holy crap. Birdly has been beheaded by Noel. Murder. Chess predicted the Snowgrave route? Crazy. The concept of Birdly going into the Dark World in his outfit just being he gets airpods and an extra pocket is amazing, actually. I'm calling it now. When Sans enters the icy Dark World, his Dark World outfit is also just going to be his regular outfit. His outfit's just always going to be consistent from Undertale to Deltarune and from the Light World to the Dark World. Tell me. this art the Neo Blaster just sitting on the piano unused music oh I'm actually really interested in this 
Wait. Power of Neo Unfinished? Is this early Big Shot, or is this actually, like, a longer version of Power of Neo from Undertale? Okay, so it says from the second chapter. Got it, so this is basically an extended version of Metaton's Power of Neo but he decided to significantly change it for the sake of Spamton's character taking over Neo body. So then we got Big Shot. All right. I'm actually really excited to listen to this, even if it, Toby doesn't like feel that this is exactly when he'd use, but let's see. So this is how the sun normally starts, but... Oh. Holy crap. This is actually insane. Oh, it's so dramatic. Okay, I really hope people make covers of this song. I would absolutely love to listen to like 50 different covers of this. Also, it, it borrows so much from Battle Against a True Hero, which I guess shouldn't be surprising since the melody comes from that song, but yeah. Holy crap, that's so sick. Oh, that's intense. piano solos and undertale music. And download. All right. Um, It didn't quite hit me just how much deep down I wanted a complete version of this song, but like now, hearing this, like, this was pretty darn good. This was pretty darn good. So something that I actually thought of while listening to this, I think is kind of funny. 
I feel like um, Napstablook or um, the Mad Dummies theme should be incorporated into the song in some way, like as a leitmotif, maybe. I mean, then again, I don't think um, in Battle Against a True Hero there is any leitmotif from like Undyne or Alfie's or anything like that. And there aren't really any Undertale leitmotifs in Megalovania either, so I guess since this is a genocide boss track, maybe it actually doesn't really need that. I guess that's more of a neutral and pacifist thing now that I think about it. Well, genocide is just, we're going all out, let's fight. But I found it funny that my brain thought about that because it reminded me that there is a Mad Dummy leitmotif in Big Shot, which, you know, references how Metaton is actually a ghost and Spamton took over Metaton's body, so it makes sense to reference Dummy there. So I just figured I'd mention that since I think that's something that goes over a lot of people's heads. It went over my head for a long time too, but I was just thinking about it and I was like, oh yeah, there is like a strong connection there, callback to Metaton's lore and Big Shot that I really appreciate. Anyways, yeah, this was sick. Next, Power of Spamton. Oh, there's going to be so many new fan covers and remixes and stuff because of this. Unfinished tracks, the drums are especially placeholder. Once Spamton's presence in the Neo battle became solidified, I realized the original track... So interesting, he was planning on doing a Neo battle before Spamton was, like, really a thing. That's really interesting. So I'm, what that makes me think is I feel like, because there's like basically been a popular theory and I've like thought this ever since chapter two came out too, that uh, Toby's going to basically for all the secret bosses do all the soul modes and like go in reverse order of what um, basically the, uh, we find the soul's equipment or, like, the order that is in the Omega Flowey fight. Because in the Omega Flowey fight, the last one you go up against is Justice, which is yellow. So, I'm guessing since he wanted to do a full Neo fight at some point, he was like, oh, the perfect time would do it would be for the uh, Justice secret boss. And so, yeah, I'm guessing that's how that happened. And then later he decided on it being Spamton taking over the body of Metaton Neo. And yeah, that's really interesting. So I tried to work in some more sinister and creepy feelings. The idea became this. The two tracks are nearly identical, but the newer version has different drums and more elements of Spamton's theme in the intro. It's also even more unfinished. <laughs> Alright, Power of Spamton older. So way more focus on Power of Neo in this. Okay, it's literally the same beginning as the last one. Oh, I recognize that! That actually is in Big Shot, it's just really hard to hear and more in the background. A lot of repetition to kind of get that, like, glitchy feeling that Big Shot very much has.
Oh, there it is. Oh, that's so dram. It's so cool hearing the freedom motif, like a kinda officially in a different way from the world revolving in Big Shot. Oh, I love that. Oh, don't forget! I'm with you in the dark. I'm with you in the dark. Oh, I love this. I think this, just hearing all this unused music honestly makes this newsletter my favorite so far. I absolutely love this. All right. This version of Power is Phantom. I, I really just want to listen to that last section of Don't Forget Again. That was so good. I wonder if, like, maybe if Power of Spamton could, like, be reincorporated in the future as, like, a Spamton Neo Weird Root battle theme. Because I always did think it would be really cool if that fight got its own battle theme. Just because the intensity of it going from a 3 versus 1 fight to a 1 on 1 fight just really makes it feel different, and I feel like a change in theme to go with that would just feel really hype and add to the intensity. And Power of Spam 10 does, like, feel... Oh no. It feels a bit less crazed, but adds, like, a bit more drama. Although, Big Shot also does feel pretty dramatic when um, the freedom motif plays in that as well. But I think Big Shot does work fine for the weird route, but just something I just started thinking of. Alright, I think this is where Don't Forget comes in. There it is. Oh, I love it. I am ascending listening to this. Honestly, you could just take that last section of Don't Forget, put it on Big Shot, and then just have that be Spam to Neo's Weird Root theme. I think that would be amazing. Well, obviously you would have to change it a little bit to fit Big Shot better, but like, that last part, I just love that so much. Spamton Battle Forgotten. Apparently this was the first concept I came up with for Spamton's battle theme. To be honest, I have absolutely no memory of this. Well, that's a funny muse, you know, like, don't forget, but... <laughs> uh, when I found it in my files, I was quite surprised. Maybe Spamton made it himself. By the way, originally I was planning to have Spamton's intro song, Hey Every also be his shop theme. That would have been kind of aggravating, not gonna lie. Just you enter his shop, it's just da 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 Okay. It was planned that it would slowly drop in pitch. Oh, that actually does sound kind of interesting, but Dial Tone is like a masterpiece in my opinion, so I'm glad we got that instead. The longer you stay in the shop until it's unrecognizable. But that ultimately did not match the tone of the dialogue, so I ended up using Dial Tone for that. 
Right. Also, Dial Tone was probably originally just planned for after you beat Spam to Neo. That's really interesting. That it had that scene specifically in mind, I'm guessing. Yeah. Huh. So, new Spam Ten track just dropped. Ooh. I like how this adds more concept, more context to Hey Every. Like this is what it's from. I actually feel like this could just less than instead of being a battle theme, this could be like Spamton's theme before he like went completely crazy and got corrupted. Like this is his sales theme from back in the day. Oh no. Okay, there's the corruption. Mom, come pick me up, I'm scared. Alright, that, that, that got horrifying real quick. Quick. Why'd I say quack? What is happening? Giga Queen Old. The song plays when Giga Queen first appears is actually a slowed down version of the original battle song I had created for her. Oh, interesting. Though the instruments are placeholder, I actually think this song isn't half bad. Just it didn't really sound much like a boxing match, right? After I created the Thresh Machine power-up sequence beforehand, I decided to instead make a song based on that. Okay, but I'm actually excited to hear this because the song when Giga Queen first appears, it like sounds like super mecha and I love it, so I'd love to hear like what sounds like sped up and more like a battle theme, so here we go. Yeah, this is, like, intimidating. Oh, snap. Queen fans rise up. I feel like if we actually got a fight against Queen in the Weird Root, the theme would sound like this. I like how whenever I just hear an alternate battle theme I like, I'm like, yeah, this could be the Weird Root theme. That's just immediately where my brain goes. Alright, that's cool. Ooh, Castle Town Unfinished. Originally, I wanted the Castle Town to sound very upbeat. That's really interesting to imagine, huh? But something about it reminded me of, like, that one goatee song. I don't know what that is. The melody of the initial parts ended up being a bit too repetitive for me. I really like how the song sounds from 45 seconds. The song is completely unfinished past 1 minute 27 seconds. This is fun. Ooh. I actually really like this. Oh, that's intense. Okay, suddenly the legend. Three heroes appeared at World's Edge to banish the Angel's Heaven.
Oh yeah, I see why I liked past 45 seconds. Or around 45 seconds. It's got kind of a carnival feel to it. And then finish time. Wait, that was Chaos King. That's the end of Chaos King. But yeah, that's interesting that the end of Chaos King was, <laughs> geez, the end of Chaos King was taken and put there and like that was considered for Castletown. I mean, there's a connection that it's, um, it's Rousey's kingdom, Rousey is a prince, Chaos King is, well, just the king is a king. So I guess, like, referencing Chaos King could just be like, yeah, it's a uh, castle town, royalty, all that. But also makes me wonder if maybe there's some kind of connection between Rousey and the king planned in some way. Some kind of, like, character connection, which would be interesting. I don't know. That was neat. Yeah, it's actually interesting because I can totally understand why Toby's first thought would have been to make an upbeat theme for Castletown because, like, Castletown is a pretty nice place. You've just got everyone hanging out, just doing fun stuff. But I do really like what we got. I really like my Castletown. I think it's one of my favorite tracks that Toby Fox has ever made. And I think it really captures Rousey's character. Uh, Jaru actually made a video I really like where he did a tier list of all the music in Deltarune and he also like talked about My Castle Town a lot and how it feels like it connects to Rousey's character and I pretty much agree with that. And since it is Rousey's kingdom, I just feel like it is very fitting that we get like a very like Rousey focused character theme, at least I think we do. It might not actually really be intended for Rousey at all, but I, I'm, I'm pretty confident it is since it's, once again, I just feel like in general the legend theme is very, like, tied to Rousey in particular more than any other character since, you know, he's the one who explains the prophecy and all that. But yeah, ooh, rules battle. Actually showed this one before, but the truth is I had made it for chapter two and not chapter one. The song was way too serious though, so I had to make a goofier battle theme later. Ray, I think I do. Maybe you remember this at some point, it's been so long. Well, uh, when Rolls reveals his true power, this could probably be used for that, maybe, I don't know. 
Queen Battle Original. I think this is my favorite of the unfinished tracks. At least, it's the one I listened to the most when I was working on the game. Oh. Back when Queen looked more intimidating, I wanted to use this as her boss theme. Personally, I still really like it, and I even wanted to try to use it for Birdly's battle instead. But the issue was that it just didn't match either of the theme melodies I had already created for those characters. Bizarrely, I seem to have made this after already making her theme song, as an early version of her theme song is inside of the project file. 130 onward piano only is totally unfinished. Ooh. Honestly, listening to this just makes me excited for the actual music that will make it into future chapters because it just reminds me there's so much Toby Fox music. There's just so much Toby Fox music we have yet to hear. Honestly, while Toby Fox considers that last part unfinished, I kind of like the idea of a piano solo like coming in at the end there, but... <laughs> Alright, that's it. Conclusion. Thank you very much to everyone still reading these letters. These letters are happy to still be read. Are you happy reading them? Are you in a happy town? Here's a letter. It's not this letter, but you, you can still read it. What is this? Is this lore? My best friend's favorite number is 9. It's because there is a number that's higher. 9, 99, 999, 9,999. If everything gets high enough, you become invincible. Nothing can hurt you anymore. Nothing can hurt you. Nothing can hurt anyone anymore. I kinda maybe get Noel from this a bit for some reason. I might be completely wrong about that, but isn't it scary to think there is a highest number? That if you made 99 good memories, you couldn't hold anymore. So I don't like to keep count of the flowers we pick, or the times that they laugh, or how many scary faces they make. This really feels like Noah referring to Chris. I just hope we'll be friends for 999 more years. Interesting. But did it make you happy to read it? See you this year, next year. Bye-bye. Ooh.
If you get enough power, nothing can hurt you, huh? Well, anyways, I actually think this is my favorite newsletter so far just for that music section. So, uh, yeah. Thanks for watching, and see you again.